If you are going through a degenerative myelopathy uh, diagnosis, one, make sure you join the Facebook group that is for degenerative myelopathy pet parents. Um, I'm going to link that group in, in the video description so that you can please join that group. It is such a great support system. It's really sad because this disease is sad, but you will be armed with so much information and support that I think it's so worth pu pushing past that sadness to get information and uh, advocate for your dog however you can. Two, and this is something I learned in the group, is make sure you get genetic testing. I'm going to put some links and comments for that. There are two companies that I would recommend, and uh, you can choose either one of them. I think it's really important uh, before we lose our mutts, especially, is to find out what breeds they were, like just for fun. So I got to do that when I did the test for Titan. Uh, he came back like, you know, we already knew he was like, a million things and it came back but it was like nice to know i wish i had done it for my socks um who is up there in that picture right there but i didn't do it for her before she passed away because she passed away kind of suddenly so if you have an older dog an aging dog and you haven't done a genetic test they really are a great thing to kind of learn about your dog if you have a mutt and the genetic testing now tests for many, 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 many genetic defects, genetic mutations, genetic propensities. And one of them in most of these tests is degenerative myelopathy. So if your dog comes back as a carrier for degenerative myelopathy, chances are it could be degenerative myelopathy. If they have the genetic mutation that causes degenerative myelopathy, the chances that they have degenerative myelopathy are pretty much sure thing. If your pet comes back like mine did with no carrier status and no gen a genetic marker for degenerative myelopathy, then the chances of actually having a dog with degenerative myelopathy are very, very slim. In fact, there is an organization that I'll also link in comments that uh, researches degenerative myelopathy. That is what they were created for, and that is what they do. And I actually believe that that organization is involved with the Facebook group that I just referenced. Um, I'm going to put the, a study that they did where they said that out of 400 dogs, I think, and I haven't read this study in a long time, so forgive me if I get this, the, the numbers wrong, but out, out of hundreds of dogs that they tested, every single one that came back negative for degenerative myelopathy was in fact negative when they did the postmortem test. So one of the only ways, at least prior to genetic screening, to find out if your dog was in fact positive for genetic the genetic mutation that causes degenerative myelopathy was actually to take a sample of the spine post-mortem. Uh, so that is how they confirm whether or not a dog had degenerative myelopathy. For many years, it was just kind of like the veterinarians would look at the symptoms, look at the pro progression of the symptoms and say, this looks like degenerative myelopathy. But thanks, thanks to science, we kind of have a better understanding now of the disease and how it shows up genetically. So if your dog come back with no genetic markers, is not a carrier for uh, degenerative myelopathy, chances are they have something similar like mine does, but it's not genetic uh, degenerative myelopathy. So that doesn't answer the question of what, like what your dog has, but it's actually good news because like I said before, degenerative myelopathy can be very quick. It can progress very, very quickly and it can be devastating to watch your dog kind of stumble a little bit one month and then four or five weeks later your dog's completely immobile completely unable to take himself or herself to the bathroom it just becomes really really sad and it progresses really quickly especially in old dogs so degenerative myelopathy is something you don't want for your dog so if you get a negative congratulations if you get a positive i'm so 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 sorry it is a devastating disease and i do plan on doing a video on quality of life and what i believe uh, based on all the dogs that I've taken care of in the past and all the things that I've seen within my own experience about when it's time to call it. And only you can make a decision on when it's time to say goodbye to your pet. And thankfully, we have the option of euthanasia where we can put our pets down with dignity, surrounded by love, in peace. They don't feel anything. And it really, we take the pain that they're experiencing or the discomfort that they're experiencing and we take it away from them and sure we break our own hearts and it's the most difficult decision most pet parents will ever make in their lives and you know it's actually harder than a lot of things people experience in general in life not just pet related uh so it's not an easy situation but it is something 
that a lot of degenerative myelopathy pet parents, dog owners um, have to face because at some point, the quality of life is just no longer there.